59 Cadillac Pinot Perino. The body, uh, body on dolly. You look down over here. There's an enormous amount of car. Um, 59 uh, hydromatic jet away transmission rebuilt inside and out. Um, originally in actually pretty fair and decent condition, but uh, just worn and tired, nothing catastrophic, just the full go through. Numbers match engine, same setup. Original rebuild, uh, pinned on the side, just like this uh, over here uh, from a little micro crack, pretty, uh, pretty average and common. That was uh, after the initial tear down, which required a chisel to take this piston or this piston out in about five hours, but just the piston itself, um, but in pretty good shape. Uh, Tri-power, so this is in its raw pre-painted status and uh, ready for tri-power and reassembly. Um, if you look, you got some A-arms and cross members that are uh, clean, prepped, painted for uh, reassembly and as a little bit more time goes on, you'll see the uh, drivetrain and uh, you'll see the body and, and odds and ends of components start coming off the car. Most of it is on the car and intact or very nearby its, its final destination, only for the point of fear of losing or uh, misplacing any and all items um, stamped. Every component, every piece in the vehicle is stamped, dated, uh, or it's stamped and then uh, it goes back to the, the bin dating of the car. Uh, clamshell front end a good. Clamshell good. One piece front end. Um, one of the neat things that I've noticed on this car is if you look at the ignition condenser, it's in perfect condition. Absolutely perfect, which is never seen or happens. So this right here is uh, it's like finding a vein of gold in a car. That uh, we basically will clean it, refurbish it, and, uh, and cut open the tank actually down here on the weld. Take the uh, basically the filter element out that removes moisture, reseal it with the sight bolt that's right in there, and reuse the same exact stuff uh, and reassemble the car with as much of the original pieces that they came off of the assembly line or at Painter Farina. Um, front grille bumper assembly probably weighs the same as a Honda Civic, pretty much. Uh, that was blown apart and probably guessing probably just about as many parts as a Honda Civic has. Um, you can see uh, the craftsmanship, just certain things like they did non, they did basically machine flathead screws that are flush mounted. This is, ex this, this section right here is 100% exclusive to these 100 cars that were built. And technically 99 that were delivered, 100 that were actually built with the loss of one of them. Um, if you look on the back side, gently, you can see the complexity of every one of these, these pieces around the bullets to the verticals. The um, horizontal and the vertical fins, how everything attached. Those are all singular individual pieces that have basically been assembled to make this and be stable as one unit. So you're talking about ounces that are put together in such a manner that connect to each other without a uh, overall skeletal structure that make pounds and stay together and just look beautiful, pretty much. Um, <clears throat> come around to this side. This is the whole third member, and like we were saying earlier, kind of looks like a truck rear axle, how big and heavy duty it is, but with the air suspension and the singular control arm in the rear, gave it Absolutely incredible ride, and then the shock absorbers, obviously. The um, kind of jump around quickly. The airbag for suspension fits in underneath in these buckets where the rear end goes. And that's your springs. That's what holds a car up in the air when you're driving. Um, 
the next frame. And that would be, uh, this is one of the early examples or designs. Um, can't remember if it's a couple years before this. 56 did not have the style chassis. 57 may have. I can't remember offhand. If you look, uh, this is uh, should be A.O. Smith. You can see the original stampings. And upon the uh, initial disassembly of the car and pressure wash, we were cleaning, swept across, and noticed something and immediately stopped. If we swept and went back, we would have never seen it. It basically would have pressure washed it right off. So we actually have the original stamping on the chassis, which is awesome. I mean, it's never seen. Um, here is a, uh, an example of or close to basically what a front bag setup looks like. 57 to 60 ran similar, small variations, but very similar. Um, that's a spring here. After all these years, we still hear the air. There. And that's what held four of these held the car up, along with the little copper tubes and lines that are over here. Sounds like a musical instrument. <laughs> Music in my ears. I love these things. So the copper tubes are for inflation and deflation. <laughs> yes, copper tubes, inflation, deflation. And so you can find a simple example. Basically, there's multiple control valves, but very simple idea. Mechanically, to pneumatically actuated. These are copper lines. This is actually an extra core one. Um, three, four, three, four, three, four, maybe five total in the vehicle. I don't remember offhand. Um, and then uh, compressor is rear bag. Looks different, but same idea. And then, uh, now, AC compressor is buried down in there, but it's actually a little twin aluminum head decompressor that runs piggyback to the uh, power steering pump. And then rear bumper. And you have rear bumper and you have drum brakes. And in this box here, that's pretty hard to see all the tri power taken apart, bag tag ready to go back together. So it doesn't look pretty in the oil boxes. All the hardware, body mounts, individually tagged so that we know exactly where they go back in. And then the crazy complicated worm drive for the rear window, quarter, vent windows that have to go back before the door opens to the relay assembly module, 40 pounds and 6,000 component type of items that today would be a $12 chip that could fit between your two fingers. Um, made the, uh, this car, the car that you were driven in, not that you drive, because in order to open the door, the one wing, the way it's offset, look over here, you can see the way it overlaps at the door. So the one wing, the recorder had to come back where the door could be opened. The air suspension and the ignition would not activate if the back doors were open because again, it was going the back to sit there open. So it was an, an early safety feature, but in order to get to that, if you look back to that. An electronic and mechanical nightmare? Um, that was, um, I think uh, Thomas Edison might have invented that, however early on that was. So what are the next steps? Uh, next step will be um, take the chassis, set it out, have it sandblasted, chassis suspension, all of the heavy metal components. Uh, you'll come back uh, uh, basically in the appropriate finish back to what it was originally and then reassemble the suspension, reassemble the engine and all the drivetrain transmission components for reinstallation and if you look at one of the early videos um, when we actually separated the body from the chassis and then did the separation of all the drivetrain Play that in reverse with nice and new parts that have been refurbished, and that's pretty much what you're going to see coming back together. Uh, we'll have a full roller with all the air suspension and everything, and then uh, from there, body will come apart in careful and systematic pieces. The rough work done, put back on, interior and the other components will come off also. Um, everything will be kind of done as sub-assemblies as far as we can, 
go back on for final fitment, final blocking, and then the whole vehicle will be tanned on the dial, on the dolly, and then, or actually just shy of the dolly, we'll mount it on the car, separate, uh, bag everything up on the uh, engine, the, um, the rolling chassis to the body, so that everything is final fitted, then do the final alignment and spray it, and then that's where the electrical, the wiring, um, the uh, interior, the glass, the trim, the moldings, that will be the last part to go back on the car. And, uh, drive and hopefully we'll have all of the uh, time-lapse videos of all that uh, going back together be a lot yeah a lot then though there will be a lot of time-lapse uh, videos in sub assemblies and um, and reassemblies and reassembly and partial disassembly and a reassembly and partial disassembly and a reassembly for good to make sure it's done right